Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. Here are photos of the top 24 MLB players in all-time sacrifice bunts. Do you notice anything? They're all really old. Back in the early days of baseball, the sacrifice bunt was a key weapon, and the MLB record for the most sack bunts belongs to Hall of Famer Eddie Collins, who laid down 512 successful sacrifice bunts. The most for a modern player would be Omar Vizquel with 256. In other words, the sack bunt has been losing popularity since long before Major League Baseball adopted the universal DH in 2022. Once that move occurred, it has become an endangered species on the verge of extinction. During the 2022 season, the Atlanta Braves laid down their first sack bunt of the season during the next to last game of the year. Michael Harris laid it down, and it was the only Atlanta Braves sacrifice bunt of 2022. However, the sack bunt seemed fairly common when I grew up watching baseball in the 80s and 90s. Sure, pitchers almost always laid down a bunt when they came up with a runner on first and less than two outs, but even position players like Brett Butler were master bunters, whether it was for sacrifice reasons or trying to get on base. However, the sacrifice bunt's most popular time came long before mine back in the first half of the 20th century, and it was for two main reasons, a lack of power hitters and a lack of advanced analytics. In today's game, nearly every hitter in a lineup is capable of going deep at any time. In 2022, there were 5,215 home runs hit during Major League Baseball games. Compare that to 100 years ago, 1922, when there were just over 1,000, and even then, that was an MLB record at the time. Of course, there were less teams and less games overall, but the home run to at bat ratio was much, much worse at the time, and the vast majority of hitters were not a threat to go deep. Only seven players hit over 20 home runs in 1922, compared to 71 in 2022. When you cannot rely as much on a potential extra base hit or home run, you have to rely on small ball. And if a leader leads off the inning with a single, the early thinking was to steal or sack bunt him into scoring position so that another single will likely mean a run. Nowadays, the risk of stealing is not usually seen as worth it, much less giving up an entire out. But what really killed the sack bunt wasn't just relying on the extra power, but it was the analytics. It was discovered through crunching the numbers that on average, a team will score more runs from the point of having a runner on first base with zero outs, as opposed to having a runner on second base with one out. In other words, by giving up an out and bunting a hitter over to second base, your run expectancy falls. The only exception would be if the hitter is almost an automatic out anyway, which was why the sacrifice bunt was still somewhat common before 2022, with the exception of the pandemic-shortened 2020 season in which the NL also adopted the DH. Once both leagues adopted the DH, the sack bunt all but disappeared. When looking at the current active leaders in sacrifice bunts, you will see mostly pitchers. The all-time active leader is Clayton Kershaw with 110, followed by Elvis Andrews, a position player, but then pitchers Johnny Cueto and Adam Wainwright. With the elimination of pitchers batting, the sacrifice bunt has become a lost art. A lot of managers don't like to waste outs, and they consider a bunt a wasted out, said Mickey Morandini, who had 61 sacrifices in an 11-year career. I do think if you run some of the numbers, big numbers, like every game for 70 years, it's probably, you can say if you swing away in bunt situations, whatever you would call a bunt situation, your odds of scoring are greater, Rockies manager Bud Black said. Another reason for less sacrifice bunts is that players don't practice bunting. With the combination of more players wanting to hit for power and less and less bunting occurring, hitters don't work on it. And bunting is certainly difficult if one hasn't worked on it. Guys don't want to work at it and they can't bunt, former manager Larry Boa said. They don't know how to bunt. To me, if you practice bunting, it's the easiest thing in the world. But if you don't practice, it's the hardest thing in the world. So now, asking a player to sack bunt adds even more risk than in the earlier years. The odds that the player bunts an easy pop-up or simply can't lay one down are all higher than ever. It's embarrassing to see guys at the big leagues not be able to lay down a sacrifice bunt, Boa said. It's embarrassing, but... It's not a priority. Lots of teams don't want to give away outs. Not to mention the fact that pitchers are better than ever. They're not just going to throw an 85 mile per hour fastball down the middle and make it easy. Trying to bunt off pitchers nowadays who throw nasty sliders, 
hard cutters, high 90s heat with movement, it's tougher than ever. And as more and more front offices embrace the era of analytics and pass that information on to the manager, the sacrifice bunt will continue to decline. The reality is, giving up an entire out is usually just not worth it. You only have three outs to work with, and in a typical situation with a runner at first and no outs regardless of the score, letting the hitter swing away is better than giving up an out in order to move the runner into scoring position, especially because there's no guarantee it will even work. You might as well try to steal. You're still taking a risk, but if successful, you don't give up an out. Simply put, in most situations, bunting at all is suboptimal. However, even today, situations do arise in which a surprise bunt can be a deadly weapon, especially with a runner on third. Of course, this is not your typical sack bunt. This is the squeeze play. And when a team desperately needs a run, it can work wonders. Of course, another type of bunt that is rarely, if ever seen, is the suicide squeeze, which requires the runner at third to break before the ball is even bunted. This type of play is seen as just far too risky in today's baseball, especially since the safety squeeze is almost just as successful when the bunt is laid down. Ultimately, it was a combination of the universal DH, more home runs, and modern analytics that did the standard sacrifice bunt in, and small ball, hit him over and knock him in, is becoming less and less relevant in today's game of home runs, walks, and strikeouts. Bunting in general is way down, including bunting for a hit, which was making a slight comeback with the extreme shifts, leaving the entire left side of the infield open. But with shift restrictions put in place this year, bunting for a hit is going away as well. However, I don't believe the bunt will completely go away, or at least not anytime soon, which makes it all the more exciting when one is laid down and it works out. However, the standard sack bunt, where a runner on first with no outs is just bunted over to second, is a play that may completely disappear. Thank you so much for checking out today's video on the sack bunt, another dying art in Major League Baseball. Let me know your thoughts of the lack of small ball in today's game. Do you miss it? Or is today's modern game more exciting when most of the lineup has the ability to go deep at any time? Hit that thumbs up and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, and we will talk to you in the next one.